A patient has anterior crowding due to large size of teeth as compared to the base of the mandible. Okay, so there is tooth size arch length deficiency which is causing crowding. And this is genetically transmitted. Okay, so this tooth size arch length deficiency is something that is genetically transmitted. So such a type of crowding is known as primary crowding, secondary crowding, tertiary crowding or complex crowding. Now first let us have a look at the different types of crowding. Now crowding can be classified into three types okay, on the basis of its etiology. It can be primary crowding, it can be secondary crowding or it can be tertiary crowding. Now primary crowding is seen in those situations which are genetically determined or there is some hereditary factor. Okay, This means that there is some discrepancy in the size of the teeth and the jaws. Okay, They are not, they're not proportional which causes a tooth size arch length deficiency which leads to crowding. Now the characteristic features that is seen in primary crowding is a staggered position of the upper incisors. So this is how they appear. Staggered position of the upper incisors. Okay. This is a very uh, characteristic feature. And persistent tooth germ position. Persistent tooth germ position. This in itself is a separate question that can be asked in the examination that uh, persistent tooth germ position is seen in which type of crowding. Now, what this means is that when the incisors are developing, in the, when they are in the tooth germ position, they are much more lingually placed than what is the final position in the arch. Okay, uh, During eruption, the incisors move forward and downward to come into the position in the arch. Whereas here, what you see is that the lateral incisors are still blocked out, lingually blocked out from the arch. So this is like they are present in their original tooth germ position. So that's why it's known as persistent tooth germ position. Now this is very commonly seen in the upper anteriors. Okay, commonly seen in the upper anteriors. And these are characteristic findings of a primary type of crowding. Secondary crowding is that kind of crowding which occurs because of any acquired or local causes. Okay. So this is typically seen in those situations when there is an early loss of early loss of teeth and there is no replacement of this teeth. Okay, so there is drifting of the adjacent teeth which takes up the space of this tooth, bringing about a decrease in arch length. Okay, so here if you see, this is a type of secondary crowding. Here there is a first premolar, so this is four, and this is a sec uh, first molar, so this is six. Now there was an early loss of E. Okay, which was never replaced or which was there was no space maintainer which was given. So now the 6 has drifted anteriorly and it has occupied the place where a 5 would have erupted. Now for this 5 to come into the arch, there is no place because there is a arch length has decreased. So this 5 will either be impacted or it will erupt in an ectopic position. This is going to bring about crowding. Right, so such kind of situations are seen in secondary crowding. Now, tertiary crowding is seen characteristically in the adult patients when there is late mandibular incisor crowding. Now, the etiology for this type of crowding has not been determined and it is still debatable. Uh, because initially, even in those adult patients who had no crowding in the lower anteriors, after they reached about 18 to 20 years, they started uh, finding there is some crowding that is seen with the lower anteriors. Like here, you can see in this image, there is crowding with the lower anterior, which was not present previously. So, the, uh, one of the theory that was given was this could be because of the pressure from the third molars which are erupting in this age group. However, this is again a very debatable and not a confirmed theory. So, But this kind of uh, crowding that is seen uh, characteristically in the lower incisors that too at a later stage of life is known as tertiary crowding. So now that we have a basic understanding of the different types of crowding, we now know that when there is tooth size arch length discrepancy which is genetically uh, transmitted, this is a type of primary crowding. Now from this topic of crowding, they could also ask us about simple crowding and complex crowding as well as first degree, second degree and third degree crowding. Okay, so you should go through these topics as well.